bid you good day, as always, taking into account the moment, its progression, the progression of thoughts that you have, the progression of feelings that you entertain moment by moment. And I begin this way particularly because of the topic that we are to explore this day. I bring to you for your consideration the subject that we will simply entitle privacy. Begin to consider what it may mean to you. Are you a private individual? Do you protect your thoughts, your feelings, your words from others? Do you choose carefully what you will say so that your words will be received with a very specific meaning that you have implied? Do you prepare ahead of time your thoughts in this way? Do you prepare your dress in a certain manner in order also to project an attitude, an arrangement of self? Do you dress similarly like others so that a certain system, a thought of class, an idea of freedom, do you allow the colors that you adorn yourself with to speak for you? All of these are aspects that describe whether you are in that moment private or public. How much of yourself do you say or share with others? Are you speaking when you are not speaking? Are your thoughts telepathic enough already to be received by others. Think upon this for a moment. How wonderful it would be to communicate telepathically with almost everyone. Certainly it would be a convenience to you if at a long distance you could know what someone was thinking or feeling and perhaps to convey the same to them. But more of the time, it is that you would like this information from others before you convey the same to them. So it is a fine time to explore what parts of you are public or private. How much of this is by choice or necessity? How much of this you can command or control? And... It is a fine time to explore how much of this may in fact be out of your control altogether. Perhaps it would be a fine time to begin with a bit of history on the subject of privacy. Perhaps most of you would consider yourselves ordinary citizens in an ordinary land following the basic or exaggerated laws of the land at this time. Long and longer ago, this was also true. And regardless of what kind of citizen you were, certainly you had an idea to maintain privacy. Long ago, there were less people upon the planet, and so it was a fine time as well to know that you could not be overheard or overseen because distance protected you in some way. Thicker walls than those that you have today protected you, or so many thought. But if we were to take just a peek at a longer ago time, we would also find that there was a time of spies. Spies everywhere. Those that lurked in the background, wanting to gather just a little bit of information, just a small shard of truth, a sharp enough shard that it could pierce the heart or the life of many. And so though there were fewer peoples upon the planet and a greater distance separated many, privacy and secrecy was all very, very important. At certain times and within certain groups there were many that lived very close to one another in cots or bunks, in smaller homes than you have today, 
without even the benefit of walls and doors to separate even a breath. So how did one protect one's privacy there? Well, there were many different kinds of thoughts then, and individuals could in some ways more easily segment these thoughts. There were those thoughts that belonged to the group, those that affected the well-being of the family or the case system that one belonged to. These involved how to plan for this season or the next season, and all of the best that one had to offer one's community, these were parts of the public self. There was no reason to maintain privacy. There was no reason to say, I will keep this part for myself, or this better idea that I have for another, because there was no other. One fulfilled the roles or the task in these systems, and they were most necessary. Then there was the private aspect, the hopes and dreams. Well, these were in some ways not hidden, but protected. These ideas found a very unique place within both the mind and the heart, where a wish or a dream could be protected. And these, I will tell you, are still in effect today. Even without your knowing, there are places within you that protect dreams that took place in lives before this one. And still, there they are, protected in that same place. Your biology could identify these, could find them if necessary. They are lodged somewhere within your DNA and under certain circumstances and with a very unique appeal from the heart. For instance, if you were under a very unique hypnosis or even under a certain duress, you could bring these dreams back to yourself and relive them as if you had only dreamed them last night. So you see, there are many places within you that have, over a long, long period of time, protected truths, protected dreams and desires, and that is still true today. You simply cannot locate these places within you as easily, and because you cannot, then there is a part of you that becomes overprotective protecting even those thoughts that need no protection, hiding them at times even from yourself, as if you were placing them deep behind a closet in a little box, but then later you did such a good job of hiding and protecting them that you cannot find them yourself. Then you have to wait until you stumble upon them in this life or sometimes even in another. But we will come to that later as well. If we stay with the historic aspect of privacy and continue to explore that, I will tell you that in many ways the privacy that you enjoyed as individuals also gave you a certain public decor. For instance, I will tell you that even those that today you would consider slaves or servants had in many times and places a very excellent, well, benefit program, you would call it. For those that took responsibility for them, also took responsibility for their families. They protected their health. They protected their homes. To take a servant on was to take on their well-being. Of course, you may look into your recent history and say that this is not necessarily so. But we will come to that by and by. First and now, we are speaking of a distant past, of times that you cannot remember, or that history has recorded only the most barbaric nonsense of those times and not their genteel ways, which were equally in effect. So those who were servants and slaves enjoyed a certain system of their own. They received an education, perhaps not what you would consider a formal education, but they did receive a good deal more than many receive today. 
There were different classes as well. Those that would be considered slaves received certain benefits. Those who were servants, household servants perhaps, received a bit more. Then there were those that would be considered staff, envoys, those that could be directed, messengers for instance. Beyond that there were those that also enjoyed civil duties. There were those as well that could be held as public officers or as professionals. And all of these could have easily have been servants as well. So imagine that you were a servant or in service to one that was greater, either because they provided for your well-being in some way, but gave you such latitude as to be your own professional. In many ways you would think that you were a completely free man or yes, woman as well. Nothing within your life would direct anyone to think that you were in service to another or that you could not freely come and go, unless, of course, you would push against certain boundaries that would say that is as far as you can go with that or you can go from here to there but not beyond there. In all of these ways there was those who were content with all that was afforded to them, accorded to them. There were those that looked about them and were simply grateful how well things are. They might say to themselves, look how others must toil so much harder. They are free. I am not free. I am indentured to another, but see how much better I live than they live. And so they would go content about their days and about their ways, never thinking that they were not all but free. Ah, but at the same time there were those that simply chafed and chomped at the bit, knowing that they could not go from here to there and beyond there. Like a plague to them, every day they looked at the distant horizons and could think only of what lay beyond those lands. It did not matter to them how well their life was, or they had very little need or want. They did not look to their position. They did not look to a future or to their aged years in which they might know that they were being well cared for. They could only look at the distant lands and wonder, why not me, or what is there that I do not have access to. So be it. There you have just a glimpse of times long ago. As you might imagine, in all of our excursions, we may explore the best of times and the worst of times and all that lies in between. You can look to see all of the ways in which humanity has failed itself, forgotten itself, obliterated itself, or we can easily look at all of the great successes, of all of the great turns that humanity has taken for itself, all of the times in which it has performed somersaults and landed upon its feet in order to vision the next day and to participate in it as well. But perhaps now we are move into the current time or the current cycle so that you will understand a little bit more or that you will begin to think thoughts regarding your current version of privacy. Then of course we will allow our journey the luxury of looking at the subject into the future as well. In this moment, into all that you are privy to now, you have a certain amount of privacy, and yet more and more, the thoughts that seem to invade your private moments is that you are not so private after all, that some one or some things, or perhaps many, are looking into you and your affairs wondering about you or thinking whether what you think is important or valuable, what information you have, whether or not it is vital to another, your traits, your habits, 
all that you think and do, how important are they? Are they simply inconsequential movements of one individual? You might think to yourself, but I am just one being. What does it matter what I choose to have for breakfast or at the midday meal or in the evening? Who would likely care about such things? And perhaps you would even say, and if they do care about such things, so be it then. Let them look into my windows or peer at my bank accounts and see what I have eaten this morning. Better luck to them and so be it. If that were only the case, that would be well. But more thoughts have now crept in through the window, and these thoughts are the ones that are more troublesome to you. Now you are wondering not simply who has been looking, but why and for how long. Is it only once that they have glanced at your habits? Are your habits interesting? After all, can it truly matter in one way? And so now you are beginning to think again. What is of value to you in your life? How much is a thought worth? How much is a habit worth? And what if that habit could truly be influenced in certain way? What if that thought could be directed in some way? Is it worth more once it is influenced or directed? Or is it worth more when it is innocent and free from such? What is the value of a virgin thought versus one that is not? And so it is a fine time to begin to consider all of this. Perhaps we can move for just one more moment to the past again. And I will tell you, for instance, that in those same lifetimes that we just explored, there were many that were given generous grants. Grants to begin professional businesses. Grants to purchase lands in the name of the one that would work the land, knowing that the overseer ultimately owned it all anyway. And so there was a great deal of assistance for oneself and also for one's family members to take advantage. There was, in fact, special favors that were granted to one or to others. And it was not simply that these favors needed to be collected upon later. They truly were open, free favors. In that time, there were those that assumed different identities for different purposes. And you might imagine that a great landowner, for one reason or another, may need to assume the identity of a peasant or of a certain professional at times as well. And so this method of private or public self was also explored then. Back to the present. And perhaps we can think for just a moment about assumed identities. Well, that does seem to be a bit of a problem in many cultures and societies today. How does one maintain one's own identity and keep it from being stolen by another? Well, that is certainly a problem. But there are also times when one no longer wishes the same identity. Now they wish to take on a new one. Now they wish to change a name or some other vital information or to protect that vital information. Can you do so? Should you? And why shouldn't you? If you were to play one of your computer games, one of the very first choices that you are given is what identity you would want to assume, what name, what special features you would draw to yourself. After all, that is a choice. But, oh, in your own personal, public, private life, in that life, it is minimal the choices that you have. 
you can attempt to protect those things that are natural about you, but you cannot easily, without good reason or cause, change an identity just because you wish to. That must be granted, and that is not as easy today as it once was. We'll set that idea aside for now and simply continue with an open discussion meant to expand your horizons where this idea, where this subject is concerned. So we will play a question and answer game. I will ask the questions and I will give you the answers, but you will see that you will find yourself considering the answers along with me. So, for instance, here is how it will go. Are you a public person or a private citizen? What do you consider yourself to be? And depending upon your answer, how do you keep that or give it away or exchange it? So, for instance, ask yourself, is the home I live in private? Well, if it is under your name, it may be private. But if it is co-borrowed from another, either by a rental agreement or an agreement that you may have from a lending institution, then perhaps the information that is gathered there is public even though you are the private citizen that considers yourself the owner of such properties. So, in due time or due course, take a moment to think for yourself what part of that public-private relationship you have or you chose. Now, think in terms of perhaps one of your leisure activities, your television you may turn it on or off as you please and you may switch to any particular viewing channel that you wish. It is all completely up to you. And yet, there is only a certain amount of choices. Most of these are also under the control of those that wish to know more about you and perhaps to encourage you to participate in some of the activities or products that they would wish to promote to you. Try as you will, it is very difficult to escape this maneuver. And so even when you believe that your thoughts are private in this way, perhaps they are not. Perhaps that too has become a public moment in your private home. Perhaps you have a vehicle, one that you are very proud of. Is that vehicle yours? Is it a public vehicle or is it a private vehicle? Certainly you will have the keys to it. You can lock and unlock it at your own discretion. And perhaps you have purchased it from a viable institution that has given you its deed, and so you are its owner. That is not the case much of the time today, for there are a variety of lending institutions that also co-own that vehicle with you. While you are piloting that vehicle, you are on public streets, public property for the most part, and so then your actions your maneuvers that you will take during that time are governed by public laws that your private vehicle is upon. You cannot, you are not free for the most part to make for yourself private decisions. You may decide how and where you will go and at what speed you will travel and all of these decisions but begin to think when a moment presents itself how much of the decisions that you make while you are piloting your vehicle belong to public, public bridges, public transportation, public laws that you are projecting your private vehicle into. So if you were to weigh, for instance, 
whether those moments are public or private moments, you may find that it becomes a little bit more difficult to decide. Almost, almost everyone owns or participates in personal computing today. Almost everyone owns at least one personal computing device. These information storage systems contain indispensable information. You have entrusted them to store for you, to speak for you, to project for you, to keep track of for you. Everything from calendars to documentation, promises, engagements, perhaps contracts, and much more. These are your private domains. It is your personal private computer. And yet, much of the time, you cannot manage to keep everything that is there private. You cannot manage to keep it completely from being stolen or usurped or used or managed or monkeyed with by another, be it an institution or perhaps another private individual who, like yourself, has a different agenda. So here is now an instrument that has become very personally attached to you. It is rare that you lose awareness of it. Like a child, you cannot leave it behind. You must watch for where you have placed it, whether you have secured it or protected it or locked it in some way. You must keep all of the statistics that are gathered there private to the better degree that you can. So, if it is fairly easy, and I tell you that it is, for others to gather the information that you have stored there that may be of use to others. Is it your personal private computer or is it another piece of public domain? How much of it is truly private? Of course, you may say to yourself, well, the information that is stored there is of so little value or consequence to anyone else, so be it. If they will get their hands upon it, let them. Matters not to me. And yet, when and if that would happen, the feelings, including those of violation, personal violation that you would feel, would be significantly more than that. What about information that you have? What about your personal information, for instance, such as your medical records? Are these private or public? Some of that is being decided now in all of the high and public courts. And you are interested to the degree that you are, and yet in some ways you are powerless over that decision. How much of that information belongs to a public world? whether you feel well in your day or in your week. Should that, could that matter to anyone? Whether or not you have been inoculated against this or for that. Is that private? Is that public? If your heredity makes it that you are more or less susceptible, it should be private, yes? And so here... Simply consider for yourself how much and for what reason it is necessary to have this or who it is necessary to have this or whom it is necessary to pass this along to. Easily and with the same subject we could ask the same over any public-private filing system such as your state or local or governmental or federal taxes that you would pay and to whom? How much of that is public or private information? And because we are exploring the subject from as full a perspective as possible, what about then such as your thoughts? 
Are your thoughts private? If you are thinking a thought about a neighbor or a friend, can they? Do they know about that? Can they, do they have access to thoughts that you may have? Well, in many ways I will tell you, yes. But more of that you give away. Because you see, when you are with another, even the slightest movement of your hand gives a thought away. Whether you look toward someone or away from someone, already you have given the thoughts away to them. If you are not certain how to command your thoughts, are you in complete command of your feelings, for instance? If you shed so much as a tear, others will know what it is that you are feeling. Are these public or private feelings and thoughts? How much of these can or should be protected? That is the question that we are simply exploring for the time being. If we were to continue, for instance, with the medical, what now of your DNA? How much can be told about your DNA? How accurate is it? After all, it is a fairly new science. How much is it that one can know? If they tell you about your heredity and how more or less susceptible you are under certain cases, is it accurate information? Is it useful to know? Can it be trusted? And is that private to you? Or what if something could be prevented on your behalf, but only if you made all of your information private? then they could prevent almost anything from a childhood dis-ease to one that would take place based upon heredity or an advanced age. Would it not be grand to have all of this averted ahead of time? And if in order to have it averted, you would need to submit all of your information for review at an early age, would you, could you? And so now we have explored from a variety of perspectives, certainly not all of them, different issues regarding privacy. Whom does your privacy matter to? Whom does your public face or image or all that you would put forward matter to? And these are the subjects that are being explored now, not only by you and I in this moment, but perhaps the reason that I bring this subject to you today, it is that it is timely indeed. It is timely because these very thoughts are being considered and explored by many, by almost every government. By almost every institution, they are being considered, they are being explored, they are being delved into much more than you may be aware of. So, for instance, reviewing our list that we casually made in a moment simply as a consideration, are your homes private? Well... I would say to you that some of them are and some are not. Because built into some of the intelligent systems in the home, into their very building materials of how to keep you and perhaps your family protected at this time, is a kind of an information system, a kind of computer that records everything about the home as well. How it was built when, of what material, what it was made to support, how it was modified, and when. It is an intelligent system almost built into the walls itself, and it continues to update itself. Well, this is rather fascinating. Fascinating, you would say. If the house were to burn to the ground, we would know its cause. If someone were to break into the home, we would know their identity. That is so very important. Yes, I will indeed pay more monies for that property. 
in order to feel myself protected in that way, particularly in these times that are not as sure as other times. So be it, it may be to your liking, but now know that the home would also easily record what purchases are in your refrigerator because these are smart appliances placed in a smart home and so you will not need to be concerned with filling out a certain survey of what your preferences are how you like to butter your bread and what time your coffee is served because it would already be recorded by a very smart home environment. It would be able to appeal to you when to keep yourself warm, when to keep yourself modestly cooled. But oh, think about this for a moment as well. What if during a certain shortage you were only allowed, allotted, a certain amount of warmth or coolness and you were off by a shade or a degree. The home could also on its own record and submit that information for you. Of course, when that system was created, it was simply to alert you so that you could better monitor the progress of your expenses or that you wish to serve your environment well and wish to be within these certain statistics. But what if, when you were not, the home itself were to submit such data so that you could be fined, even if your moment had been accidental? Homes, the newer ones that are being built, can do this. And of course, consider simply that they are to your benefit until they are not. The same is true of the newer style televisions that you have. Oh, how many more functions they are able to perform for you. How well it is that you are able to customize themselves for you. That they will know what you prefer to watch and when that they will save such programming for you and alert you so that you will not miss a favorite match or what it will be. But these newer style televisions then also record not only your preferences of times, they can also record when you blink. What do you blink at? Do you blink? in the sight of a horror for newscast? Do you blink away from a masculine or a feminine response? Do you blink? Do you think? Do you feel? Do you turn on? Do you turn off? Your televisions not only are broadcasting to you and for you, they are watching you and listening to you your patterns in all that you involve yourself with. The same is true of the newer vehicles. They are made in your identity in some ways. They are locked on to your fingerprint so that another cannot take them, mismanage them or steal them for you. They are also able to transmit your actual placement to any other individual that has a similar system or that has interest in that. So your location upon a map or upon the world can be tracked. And if it is that you can begin and stop your motoring with a print, your fingerprint, or with a keyless entry, those that have created such systems have also made them of benefit to others that may have interest in them as well. And so where you go during a day is recorded. Everywhere that you have been on any given day is recorded by an internal computer 
whether or not you ever need that information, there may come a time when someone else wants or needs it, and there it will be accessible to them. And so imagine for an instant that you are given a very well and discounted rate to insure and protect you and your vehicle. Ah, but your practices may be different. Or perhaps you have instructed others that you drive very little and that most of the time your vehicle is garaged after all. Well, your practices may send a different message to those companies that insure the vehicle. And, of course, your protected rate may or may not be available to you next time. So what we are offering here is a two-sided view of what is public, what is private. It is for you to consider in all ways the world that you live in. Part of the motive for our coming together in these discussions is simply to bring awareness, to bring subjects that would not come to surface in great detail in other of our meetings, and so we gather together in such moments to explore the world that you live in. And in exploring the world that you live in, you have the opportunity to decode it, to think about it, to feel about it, to decide based upon what we explore what kind of world you wish to live in what kind of world you wish to express yourself in and in this case whether or not you wish to express yourself publicly or privately whether or not indeed there is a difference between the public and the private self how to pursue one over the other. Perhaps we will add that dimension to the subject as we continue now. So the moments themselves now are presenting to you a variety of different scenarios. Perhaps you have already been well aware of what we have brought forward. Perhaps it will come as news to you to what degree the advances that you are making are taking the cultures and societies of the world today. Every advance that is brought to you, everything that you will say, oh, how new and wonderful is that? How much easier does that make my life? or my decision-making, how less effort that is. Indeed, I will congratulate you and all of the human efforts in that regard. But now, begin to think as well. What kind of person are you? And what kind of person do you wish to be? As you consider these thoughts, we will begin to look into the future just a bit so that you will see how to project yourself, how to comport yourself in the days and times that are coming in the near future. Now, for a time it will seem that you have all of the choices, that it is all up to you, and that all of the modern conveniences that reveal themselves to you, each one in turn makes your life better than the other. This year is better and easier than last year and like that. That is for a time. Here and there you will see how the modern technology that is available has averted a certain crime, has captured, for instance, a certain criminal before he was able to commit a crime or cause harm to another. And you will celebrate these technologies, these new conventions of the time, You will consider yourself fortunate to live among these. But then there will come certain mishaps. Human mishaps, some. One individual that has mismanaged the role that he was given. An individual that has mismanaged perhaps the information that he was entrusted with. Someone that thought they could make a system better but failed in the process. Someone that for a small gain 
would leak one information over another. Small errors, human errors, will come first. An idea that was released too soon, so all of the safeguards were not put in place. A small error in technology that could have been averted but was not. Just one glitch, they will say, and look, we have fixed it already. It cannot happen again. It will not happen again. We have seen to it. But then there will be another glitch, and then another glitch. And here and there, there will be some rather significant mishaps. These mishaps will come in the age of information and technology, which you are near the close of now. Until now, information technology has been growing. It has been gathering speed. It has been taking you further and further, making your personal lives easier, your privacy more important and protected, and your public self, your persona, that which you would wish to project to others, even that it has enhanced. But now I tell you that as you continue to climb that hill, when you find yourselves upon the pinnacle of that mountain, then that is when it will begin to slip. And the mishaps that there will be will cause difficulty, not for all, but for some. The systems that were created to protect privacy they will not protect not the individual and not the greater community. And within these mishaps, that is how those that project these ideas make them available, necessary, pertinent and obligatory to the world. That is where some of them will begin to unravel and fall apart. So, the guidance would suggest to you, simply know the world that you live in. Begin to know what part of you truly is important for you to have in your public self. Be public. Be public much of the time if you wish. Whenever possible, make the self that you are in private the same self that you would be in public. That way there will be less to object to later. Let many of your thoughts serve a greater purpose or serve a sense of community. Let part of your organized system of thought within your mind belong to you, that which you are, the self that you are not the who that you think that you are. The self, the self-awareness, the self that does not hide, that does not project, that which is consequence and inconsequential in every moment. Let that side of self guide you now and if possible always that same thought system that we described of long ago, historically speaking, that knew that even if someone sat in a cot just next to you, that an invisible barrier called a well-placed thought created just the right amount of separation between you and others, no more and no less, so that it is not mistrust that separates you from others, or fear of what others think or feel separates you from others. Let it be simply that which is you and is always you and means nothing to anyone else, anything else but you. In these same homes that I have spoken to you about in the future and after some of these mishaps take place, there will be 
privacy chambers. Of course, there will be other technologically enriched descriptions and namesakes for these. But for the most part, they will be chambers where all of your thoughts are truly your own, where nothing else, where no technology can penetrate those walls of that chamber. These will be places where you can think for yourself without influence. Restoration chambers, perhaps they will call them, because you will feel yourself once again restored. Without these, you will find that your thoughts become bound one to the other. One thought of where you will be will be bound to the thought of all that is available to you. Think upon this. Today, for instance, you may decide what city you will go to today. The technology that you have will give to you every possibility of where you may dine and where you may meet and where you may spend an evening or so. All of that is of benefit to you. But what if advances in this were to calculate the relative importance of all of these decisions and create a plan for you and tell you rather than suggest to you how you will spend your day in this regard? That is why I bring the subject to you today for you to begin to consider it now. Do you have a choice in this regard? To some degree, not completely. It is the direction that humanity is moving. All is in place already, and much of what we describe is already taking place now, in every moment, in every day. So to what degree do you have a choice in this? To the degree that you consider yourself a self. To the degree that you not identify with the roles that you are, to the degree that you not identify even at times with gender or all of the capacities in which you serve. So it is important for you to begin to carve out a place within yourself that says, I am that, I am here, without any other explanation. I am that, period. I am here. Period. Do not add nor subtract to this. When you find yourself confused so that you cannot think your own thoughts, so that you cannot make them simple and interrupted, I will offer to you the same solution that I will give to you almost with every subject that we would consider. Take yourselves to a private moment into and throughout nature in and with any or all elements, you would find that this is a private chamber in itself. You will think that the tree that you are with cares very little what you have eaten as you have broken fast in the morning, or how you will spend the rest of the day, or what habits you would bring forward. When you find yourself in need of a restoration chamber, let nature be your guide in this way. I will tell you as well that it will be of benefit for you to have innocence in your heart. Hold yourself harmless in all that you think and say and do. And you will see that you will be this more and more. Hold yourself harmless even though you are accountable for your thoughts and your feelings you will see that they become more pure each and every day. Tell yourself and recognize where harmony exists in your life. You will find that there are certain places within your life or within your day that are more harmonious than others. There are some spaces that are more harmonious than others, even certain times of the day that are this. Speak honestly and openly to yourself. Let your ideas and your projections of self be honest and open. 
you will find that there is less to protect in this way. You will find that it is much easier to be within your own field and that of others if you are not pushing or resisting your field or pushing into another to see how they are arranged. Be just in your thoughts. Be just. Let your ideas be your own. Be just and speak justice in regards to others. Meaning, have an opinion, but do not judge. Be just in your assessment of others. Be beneficent and generous in your days. To be beneficent simply means that all that you are brings a certain benefit to the earth. All that you are, that every breath that you draw is of benefit to the earth, that every thought that you think is beneficial to those around you. Every act and action that you take is made at the behest and on behalf of the earth and of that which you are projecting into the now and future moments. Be generous in your well-being. Be generous in your thinking about others and into and through the future. Be generous in how you serve others. Be generous in how you give and receive. Be generous in your thoughts, in your projections, in what you see, in what you hear. Allow others to have their private selves without needing a chamber. Do not speak before or behind others so that they will continue to feel innocent without the need to protect. All of this will allow you to live in a secure world so that even if the walls see or hear, they will receive only the harmony of your frequency and your fragrance to record. So be it, sweets. You are private and you are public. There is no denying or separating yourself from the world that you live in now. It belongs to those that record it, those that are interested in it, those that believe there is personal or public gain by it. It is simply the other side of the mountain that you have climbed. And so enjoy all of the benefits that this time has to offer to you. And indeed there are many. And slowly and bit by bit, remember to yourself the lessons of the Atlanteans and those that have come before them and after them. That the great advances of an age are great and worthwhile as long as they are balanced with the memories of the past ages and the needs of the future ones. Until the next time, I bid you good day.